Mm. I didn't know any of this stuff that they were talking about in church because I'm not raised in church. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not from a church family, as they say. But uh, I believed in God. I believed in God, always believed in God. And um, I had to kind of like try and find a way how to survive in church, if that's a thing to say, because things were different. I didn't know um, the, 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 you know, Winans. They would talk about Winans and Andre Crouch. I didn't know who they were. I, I only knew Dennis Brown. Growing up, right, there were certain styles of music that was accepted and not accepted. Reggae was not one of them. And I have to think, I have to think, why? <clears throat> why isn't reggae music accepted in church? Uh, so I thought, well, let me sing my song in church and see how it goes. And I sang a song called Flesh in My Flesh, because it was a gospel song, but it was just done in a reggae, reggae vibe. Uh, thinking it might be nice. How wrong I was. Uh, the sisters, they gathered around me and um, said, no, you can't do that in church. And they wanted to lay hands on me and deliver me from the, the demon of reggae music. Now, growing up, we followed sound systems from even teenage, even though we were still at school. On a Friday night, we'd go and listen to sound systems and places like Newtown Community Centre and wherever else, whatever venues was going on, big sound systems, as Rico would know, is part of one of them. What did the music do? The music brought about that community spirit because again just like our dads previously used to do it with the with the, the shubin and the blues kind of thing now sound system had stretched out now we're playing in halls now school halls and different kind of venues and young people now were coming out and going to dances and stuff like that and that's how we got to build a community again because the spirit of music brought people together so we did less of the year um, in Excel Nightclub, I promoted myself from glass collector to doorman. Then, unbelievably, DMC, which are the Disco Mix Club of Great Britain, are holding the Birmingham Heat of um, their DJ mixing competition. And it's going to be held at Excel's. So, within less than a year of leaving church and not knowing anybody outside church i'm in excels i'm competing in the dmc mix club mixing competition which i won me and trickster a guy called trickster came equal first nobody knew me and a year later everybody knew me as the doorman who's now in the mixing competition and everybody's there chanting zaro 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 which is just it's, it's just unbelievable to know that you come from, you come into this new lifestyle not knowing anybody and you just gain this notoriety. I never planned it, it just sort of happened. By the time now we did this event in Derby, Spanner was there and witness, I'd lost my voice. It had never happened in my life. I mean, when I say lost my voice, no voice at all. So I can't say a word, I'm, I'm like a mute. I'm, get up. So Witness is supposed to hold, the, to hold the camp that night. Witness ended up witnessing somewhere. So Spanner was just standing there. And I just remember looking at Spanner. I said, yo, Spanner, I forgot all of my... Well, I couldn't talk. I just said, <laughs> I gave him the mic like sign language. And Spanner took the mic, you know. And I watched him minister with the mic. And I said, you know what? This man's got a vibe, you know. And I left it at that. You know what I mean? Maybe that's why I lost my voice, because it was something that God wanted to bring in or introduce. And anyway... We then went to fitness first. Now we did a, a, an event at fitness first and oh my days, you know, the church congregation leaders were kicking up. In fact, some of them came to the event to see if their church members were actually in the event. And you know, that event there was fire. And that was the night where Spanner kicked off with um, Come Come Mr. Blair and yo, tore up the place. Because to be honest, when, when we came into church, that I've ne I never heard before. Um, I thought it was bold of him to actually just come from the street and straight into ministry. One foot in, one foot out, and you know, he, he, you know, he would come with different scenarios of reality of how we as Christians can be functioning or what struggles we're, we're coming, coming through, and he'd put it in a lyrical content. And I just thought that he was amazing. 
when I got to my late teens and uh, met my now husband, Roger, um, we started a group which was called EVE, which stood for Evangelic Vocals for the Earth. And um, we started gigging. The very first gig was at my local church and we were very, really well received. It went really well. And um, I like wrote a very short rap for one of the covers that we sang and that was really well received. So it's like, oh, okay. So I could mix it up and kind of, you know, do a bit of rapping, do a bit of singing. And, and that was um, my thing within the group. So I wrote um, a few songs and we sang covers as well. But going back a bit further, believe it or not, the band origin, um, um, when we, we had a group called Eve, had the likes of Warren Spence, Jerome Waters, Novel Smith, all these guys when they're kids, Donovan Hepburn, um, Andrew Campbell, like, yo. And looking what they're doing now, it's absolutely crazy. Eventually I made the brave decision, I'm gonna go solo, and um, looked for musicians to work with, and the founding members of the band, um, Joshua Bailey, Jerome Walters, um, Mark Lippman, and Ricky Prince. And around that time, I would say when I was about probably 13, 14, um, I actually got a chance to meet my cousin's um, husband-to-be, who's married to now, which is Roger Moore. And we started getting, obviously we connected with music, it was a bass player at the time, and then um, D was singing, so we managed to get a band together, and I was a part of that band different world back then there was no social media um so it was all footwork and flyers really um so you know a lot of hard work and dedication but um then roger said let's get in the studio which i wasn't i was nervous about that i didn't really want to do that and we said okay we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it but we want to make remixes so remixes was a thing so everybody nowadays you just look at just one track coming out, singles. But back in the day, you had a CD and you have to have remixes to be credible. So I used to love going to get uh, people like Jeanne. Um, Sounds of Blackness was amazing for remixes. You have one track, 12 remixes, crazy. So my brother, uh, number no, brother. So we, we worked on this don't wait. And um, I remember when they started the track because I was actually out of the room and I remember thinking, what's that? And then realised that actually they were playing my track. I was like, oh my goodness. So I walked in the room and you know how like sound systems are, they will restart a track a few times. So they restarted the track. So I was stood in the pretty much the middle of the room, um, toward, towards the back, but the middle of the room. And I just kind of stood and waited for people's reaction kind of thing. So the track started and then there's that there's that drop where the bass line kicks in. Don't wait. And it was like, uh, the other day when the track dropped, it was like, and it, and it was, the place shook. And it's like, and the worst thing is, you got, you got regular guys on the, on the, on the, on the deck, so it's like, we look, we don't wait. And then we laugh again, it's just like absolutely crazy. And then when the bass line, kicked in that was it the place just went crazy like everybody was just dancing and jumping and like going like ah! and like proper excited and i was just like oh you know thank goodness people like it <laughs> people like the track like this so it was it was really humbling it was really exciting just to be there and to experience that and see the reaction I wanted to know gospel music just to, because I love music, and just to know that in a very first, um, very short period of time, through hard work, I would say, from internet desktop research and the ordering, the sacrificing financially was a massive sacrifice. Within a very short period of time, people were coming to me and saying, where's this, where did you get these tracks from? So it, it, that, that's a nice journey. I started writing um, poetry after doing a few songs. I even turned one song into a poem. And somebody says to me, you know, that sounds better in a poem. 
you know, and I said, yeah, I, I kind of like that. So I started to write poems, you know. But when I was writing uh, the, the poems, I found that I was actually writing them from my heart. And when you write poems from your heart, which is poetry in itself, is an expression of what's really going on within you. And it's funny because somebody recently said to me, and it was a minister as well, where you at? With all the lyrics and the radio and this, that, yeah, the, you know, where you at? And it sounded to me like a bit of a cheeky question because I'm thinking, it sounded a bit like a card really with all your lyrics and all your this and that. And, uh, and they, they pointed to themselves at times and says, with all my this and that and my qualification, I mean, where am I at? And I thought, well, when it comes to poetry, my experience is that when I express my poetry, what I've written, that's where I'm at. You know, this year you might get a poem talking about what's going on in the real world. Next year you might get a poem from me that's talking about what's going on with me. So if you want to know where I'm at, I'm at listen to my poetry <laughs> and that's what poetry is it's expressing you know what's really going on within you and that's my interpretation but i had to do it i found that my poetry sounded better in patwa so as much as i could write a full poem in english i could also write a full poem in patwa and i found that you got more rhymes when you mix the patwa with the english because there's some words you could say in patwa that don't even really spell like that but it's got the same ending mm -hmm.